Hello everyone and welcome to 100 Kubernetes Tools. Today is day one and we're looking at Scaffold. I'll show you what Scaffold is and why you should use it. Scaffold is a tool that I love. I use it on all of my projects. I have here a dummy project. Some of you may recognize this from my video on Python debugging. And it's really the simplest project ever. I have here a main Python file and I have here a Docker file. So this Docker file has just three lines the base image, I copy over that Python file, and I set it up so at runtime, this is what executes. Now, I also have a YAML file to deploy this to Kubernetes, and it's really the simplest possible YAML file, and in here, I have this uh, Docker image. Now, what do I have to do when I want to actually take this now and deploy it to a cluster? So I have to do three things. Essentially, I have to run a script that looks something like this. First, I'm going to build that image, and I'm just giving it a tag here, Python debug me. Then I'm pushing this image to a remote repository, and then I'm running kubectl apply, and I'm just applying this test.yaml file that we looked at before. Now you'll notice these two parts are really disconnected from one another. There's no explicit connection between them, meaning here I'm building this image, and here, I'm applying a YAML file to Kubernetes that uses this image, but it's coincidental, meaning there's no explicit connection between these. It just so happens that in this test.yaml file, I happen to use that image. Now that works, but it suddenly starts to create a number of problems. For example, let's say now um, I want to run this script and I'm running this script locally. Now I hand it off to my team member and he runs the exact same script. So what's going to happen if he made some changes at the same time that I made some changes. So we're actually going to override one another's changes. Whoever does this Docker push last will um, push to the Docker uh, registry an image. Um, here we're just tagging the default tag. Um, and my, the image that one of us pushes will override the image that the other one pushes. So we're really going to want to do something like this. I'm going to want to set here some variable tag equals, let's say my name. And now I'm just going to do that as well. Now I'm going to push this. Now there's one problem though. I didn't update it in this test.yaml file. So I have to go now and update this in test.yaml file. And I'll put here my name. And this is now just the string my name. It's disconnected from the variable that we defined in the, ba in the bash script. And as you can notice, this is really a simple thing to do, but it's something you have to do for every single project. And it's almost like I wish there was a way that we could just tie these lines together. I wish there was a way that we could essentially just say, okay, forget about the tag. You're going to go and build, uh, basically what I want to say is build Docker file, push the tag, go to test.yaml and replace the tag with the one that I just pushed and then keeps the other file. And this is essentially what Scaffold does. Okay, now we're going to look at how you actually configure Scaffold. So essentially, we have this test.yaml file, and we have this Docker file, and the whole purpose of the Scaffold configuration is just to tie those two together. So there's some boilerplate, but the core of it is here we're specifying the image name, and we're saying for this Docker file over here, then the image name that it, cor that it corresponds to is this image name. And that's here under the build configuration. And then we tell Scaffold about the deployment configuration and how we're going to deploy it to Kubernetes. And we say here, there's this test.yaml file. And then Scaffold knows to look for this image inside that file to replace it and to uh, deploy it. So now to use this, all we really have to do is run Scaffold run. And I'm adding on dash dash tail. And this will now build the image, do that swap, deploy it, and the tail at the end means it's going to actually fetch me the logs and stream me the logs at the end. Now this is going to take some time because it has to actually build the Docker image, then it has to deploy it to Kubernetes. So I'm actually going to uh, skip this part. I'm not going to show it in action. And there are two gotchas that I just want you to be aware of if you use scaffold. So let me open up my notes on that. Okay, so gotcha number one is if you're using an M1 MacBook like me, 
then you're going to have a problem by default. Because when you build that Docker image, you're building an image for an M1 Apple chip. And when you're deploying it to a remote Kubernetes cluster, in my case, GCP, then you're actually deploying to an Intel machine. So you're going to have to set up a small workaround for that. I'm not going into that in this video, but if you're interested, then drop me a comment and I'll cover that in the future. Um, if you're deploying locally to a Minikube or a Kind cluster, you won't have this issue and that will work out. Now, the other issue here is the tagging strategy. So remember earlier on, we essentially said that we want to make sure that different developers have different tags. So by default, when you build with scaffold, the default tag is going to look at your Git branch and it's going to give a, a name like master or something based on your Git branch. So there are a few different tagging strategies and you can set up different tagging strategies based on how you want it to work. So the git commit one means that two people check out the same git branch and they're on the same commit, then they're actually going to have the same uh, tag name, which you don't want. Typically what you want to use is you want to use here the input digest, which will just do the right thing. It'll take a hash essentially of all your files. Um, the other thing I want to say here is scaffold has a whole bunch of other cool stuff uh, built in. For example, you can um, run scaffold dev and then you can actually patch in files that you change into your image without rebuilding the entire image. It'll be smart and it'll see, oh, you changed this file. So let's copy over that file and let's restart your Python server with that new file. So you don't, you don't have to rebuild the whole image, it's faster. And you can also use scaffold to debug stuff with the scaffold debug command. Personally, I don't use that. I just use the troubleshooting tools for Kubernetes built in Robusta that I myself uh, wrote. So I just use that, but it's a very cool scaffold feature as well. And Scaffold has a whole bunch of other stuff. And one other thing that I absolutely love about Scaffold, which I just have to mention, is a lot of times you're working on a project like this, but you're not just running it locally. You're also ultimately setting up a CI CD pipeline, and then maybe you're releasing your project for other people, and you just want to give them a YAML file and say, take this and run it. And you don't want them to mess around with Scaffold or to mess around with image tags or changing stuff around. So essentially, I need a way to do a build on my CI CD pipeline where I build an image and I actually replace it in this file and I output the correct file. So what I would essentially do is in my CI CD pipeline, I would build the image with some tag, I would push that tag, and I'd probably use some command. I always forget the syntax, but something said, right? Like say replace some placeholder with the actual tag. And then I just output that file and people can take that file I'm going to test that YAML and they can take that file and they can apply that to their cluster. So Scaffold actually has stuff built in to do that, which is another really cool feature that's super useful. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy this. Um, it's the first time we're doing it. So uh, please send me comments. Let me know how I can improve it. Thank you for watching.